Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller mystery films from 2016, titled Lavender. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. In the year 1985, tragedy befalls a family, leading to their separation due to an enigmatic and peculiar occurrence in a farmhouse. Even the authorities, while notifying a man named Patrick, admit their inability to comprehend the events surrounding his brother and his family. Upon investigation, the police make a gruesome discovery, revealing the lifeless bodies of Patrick's brother, his brother's wife, and their daughter. The situation takes an even more bizarre turn when they find Patrick's young niece, Jane, as the sole survivor, her face smeared with blood and clutching a razor in her hand. Cut to 2010, and it's 25 years later, Jane is now an adult and already has a family. She's now a photojournalist who captures the essence of old lived-in houses in soulful photographs. Following the traumatic incident, she was adopted by a foster family, and her memory of her past and the tragic incident that happened to her family was wiped clean. She's married to Alan, and together they have a sweet daughter named Alice. Jane's relationship with them is quite strained as a result of her memory lapses, causing her to forget important matters such as appointments or picking up Alice from school. During one afternoon, while Jane and Alice are searching for new houses to photograph, they stumble upon a farmhouse that exerts an unexplainable attraction on Jane. This specific house captivates her attention more than the rest, and as Jane focuses on photographing it, Alice wanders close by and finds a piece of a toy. And then we see that she's having a full conversation, but no one is beside her. Afterwards, Jane makes a call, requesting records of the farmhouse's ownership. It's late in the evening when the doorbell rings, and she rushes to open the door. No one is there, but there's a small white box wrapped in a pretty red ribbon. In it, she mysteriously finds a child's toy Alice had found earlier, and she probably thinks it must be some sort of prank when there's a centipede alongside the toy. The following day, Jane remains fixated on the recent farmhouse she encountered. An incoming call from her husband Alan interrupts her, revealing that Jane has once again forgotten to collect their daughter Alice from school. When our heroine is in a hurry because she's terribly late, she is distracted by a glitchy call she receives from someone she thinks is Alice. She looks up to the road at the last second, and sees a little blonde girl that's going to die if she doesn't slam the brakes. The car starts tumbling, and now she's in danger of dying, not the blonde girl who has now mysteriously vanished. She ends up in the hospital, and she can hear the desperate words of a little girl. When she opens her eyes, she sees a strange man, except, we've seen him before. He's her husband Alan, but she doesn't remember him or their daughter. A doctor clarifies to Alan that the accident has aggravated a severe older injury that has made her amnesia worse. In the meantime, Jane is approached by Liam, a psychiatrist who will assist her in addressing her memory problems through a range of exercises. Surprisingly, after the brain injury, Jane's recollection process starts with the remembrance of her maiden name, which she hadn't known before. Sometime later, Jane wanders along the hospital corridor, when she suddenly encounters the same girl she saw just before the accident. Jane anxiously attempts to interact with her, but her focus abruptly shifts back to reality when Alan calls her. He informs Jane that he will be taking Alice home, and this time, Jane is starting to recognize their faces. She stays in the hospital for the night and continues her memory improvement sessions with Dr. Liam. Later that night, after the therapy session with Liam, Jane gets another package with a red ribbon delivered right to the door of her hospital room. In it is a music box dancer, and a photo from 1985 of the farmhouse she recently photographed. Once more, she ponders what to do about all this. That same night, at home, Alan also hears the bell ring and finds an envelope with some important paperwork outside. The following day, Alan brings those papers to Jane along with some momentous news. It is revealed that the house she was drawn to, actually belongs to her and is her childhood home. Her uncle, Patrick, has been taking care of it all this time. Jane has no recollection of requesting this paperwork, nor has she met her uncle Patrick since her family's tragedy. But she sees this as an opportunity, and Liam agrees that a visit may help her push out those old memories. To help make up her mind, she calls her newly found long-lost uncle, Patrick, and asks if it's okay if she pays a visit. He sounds very welcoming albeit overwhelmed and confused at first. While en route to the farmhouse where the gruesome massacre took place, 
Jane once more catches sight of the enigmatic girl she previously encountered. Once she gets to her uncle's place, her uncle, Patrick, welcomes her and finally opens up that her family tragically passed away in the very house in 1985. She asks her uncle exactly what happened, and he says only she knows what happened that night. Curious to know more, she and her family pack up to the farmhouse for a brief stay. When they reach Jane's farmhouse which is close to her uncle's home, Alan and Alice go off to explore the house, while Jane goes out back to see more of the house. In the fields, Jane senses a presence and follows it, leading her to a captivating sight, a red balloon attached to a string. As she gets closer, she gets a better view of the string, which has a key and a welcoming note tied to it. It's as if the house itself is inviting her back home. On the coming day, the family decides to explore the nearby countryside. Alan and Alice head to a maze, while Jane opts to visit a charming vintage shop. While there, a clerk named Jennifer hands her a newspaper that contains gruesome information. The town believes that Jane snapped and killed her whole family in her farmhouse in 1985. Just as she processes this, she gets a phone call from Liam, who claims she had an appointment with him. But something doesn't feel quite right, and at that moment, she suddenly sees Liam in the same shop. She proceeds to ask where he is, and he says my office, which just raises her suspicions further. She then runs after him, only to find him mysteriously vanish inside the maze. Shaken by the experience, Jane rushes back to the car, where another surprise awaits her, the same white package wrapped with a red ribbon conveniently placed in the front seat of her car. Upon opening it, she discovers a half picture of her childhood with her little sister, and a blurred image of a young lady. The picture bears her family's name, leaving Jane even more puzzled. Back home, during the night, Jane's in bed but gets woken up by Alice, and an unsettling scene awaits them. She hears voices, and Alice leads her to a bedroom, where she sees a little girl sitting on the bed with her mother, talking about a music box. All of a sudden, Alice says she isn't here, and then Jane sees the little girl holding a hammer and the young lady with the blurred face turned towards her. She also encounters her younger self, while she has a blade in her hand that appears out of nowhere. As she runs back to her bedroom and tries to wake Alan up, the little girl appears from under the bed, saying Jane has come to find them. As she hides in the wardrobe, the little girl appears and has her hands wrapped around her neck. A fight ensues with Jane coming out on top, now choking the girl. Just then, she finds herself in Alice's bedroom, and just snaps out of the dream when Alice wakes up and asks what she's doing. Jane tells her to go back to bed, and leaves the room on the verge of panicking. When she gets back to her bedroom, Alan is still asleep, and there's nothing under the bed, but she finds the jack toy again on the floor. The next day, she urgently talks to Patrick, seeking answers about her family's tragic demise. Patrick explains that his brother had been a drunk with a bit of a temper, but he worked hard and never hurt his family. However, Patrick reveals that Jane alone holds the truth, but her memory is clouded due to a past head injury. During breakfast, Alice casually apologizes to Jane, attributing her sleep disturbances to her spirit friend, Susie. But before Jane can ask her what she means, Alan comes over. Later, when Alan takes Alice out for fun, Jane decides to use the key she found with the red balloon to unlock the mysterious door she saw the previous night. Behind the door, she comes across a locked fairy box, and a picture of her younger self with the little girl she now believes is Susie, her sister. While observing the picture, she sees Susie sneaking into the cottage, so Jane follows her in an attempt to uncover the truth behind her unsettling experiences. The search for Susie has led her to find some interesting items, a pocket knife, an inhaler, and what looks to be a key to a music box. Jane then hears a little girl's voice, right before Susie appears, warning Jane of an approaching monster, and urging her to hide under the chair house. Meanwhile, with Alan, Alice discloses that a kind lady from her dreams taught her a fairy song, and told her Jane may hurt her, but Alice doesn't believe it. Alice explains that Jane isn't the actual danger, rather, the monster in the bedroom is. Back to Jane, as she tries to get out, she gets caught up in the sheets, which now appear far bigger than they were. She manages to find her way out of the sheets, but magically lands in the cornfield, where there's an open gift box with an old razor on the ground. In light of these events, Jane decides to return to her own home. As Alan loads the car, Liam, the shady psychiatrist, is seen lurking near the house, unhappy. Before leaving, Jane spots Alice running towards the cottage, compelling her to follow. Inside, 
she encounters Susie, who tells her they can't let her leave, right when Alice appears. Jane is so anxious and scared that she unconsciously puts her hands around Alice, but Alan intervenes just in time. She then runs towards the car, saying she just wants to leave, until they realize the tires have been slashed using the same pocket knife Jane found in the barn. Jane swears she didn't do it, and their argument is interrupted when Alice suddenly begins screaming inside the house, and says the man was chasing her, the monster under the bed, but then she starts choking before she can elaborate further. This is the first time it happens, and Jane suddenly remembers that her daughter is having an asthma attack, just like her sister did. Alan snaps into action, but all doors leading outside refuse to open. Realizing the spirits won't let her leave, Jane steps back, causing the door to open. But as soon as Alan and Alice leave, the door slams shut on Jane, leaving her alone in the house. Seeking to uncover the truth behind the haunting, Jane discovers a paper instructing her to play tag with the spirits. The truth starts to reveal itself in a daunting manner as she literally walks through her memories. She now sees Susie's bedroom as it was that tragic night, and she walks to the music box. Using the little key she found under the chair house, Jane opens the fairy box, and sees the dancing fairy, just like the one that was delivered in front of her hospital room before. She then finds the torn half of the family picture hidden there and unfolds it, and who does she see? It's a picture of Liam. Connecting it with the half photo she found earlier, Jane realizes they fit perfectly, which reveals that Liam might actually be her dad. Suddenly, Susie crawls out from under the bed and warns her to hide immediately as the approaching monster draws near. Jane obeys and hides under the bed, where she overhears a man entering the room and sitting on the bed, talking to Susie. He offers Susie a gift, the same white box with a red ribbon. Startled, Jane rushes out of the room without seeing the man's face. Outside the room, she encounters Liam, who reassures her that he is not the monster. Both Liam and Jane look into the bedroom, and to her astonishment, she discovers that the monster is none other than Patrick. Jane finds herself once again under the bed, but this time, a younger version of herself is hiding there, seeking refuge from Patrick. It was a typical night, Jane and Susie were home alone when Patrick, who regularly babysat them, decided to take advantage of the situation and touch young Susie inappropriately. Just as the situation escalates, their parents, Liam and Jennifer, arrive on the scene. Liam, in a drunken state, slumps on the sofa downstairs. In the chaos, Susie screams, drawing Jennifer's attention, who rushes in with a hammer in hand. And so, Jennifer caught Patrick in the act. However, his resistance to letting Jennifer call Liam results in a violent confrontation. <laughs> Patrick wrests the hammer from Jennifer and tragically kills the mother. Seeing this as her moment to escape from under the bed, Jane runs out to the bathroom, and Patrick follows close by. We see her standing in the bathtub, holding a razor behind her. As Patrick reaches out, she slashes him with it, while Liam just awakens. It is at this point that Jane collides with Liam on the staircase, and they end up both tumbling down the stairs with Jane on top of him. The fall brings Liam a sudden demise, while Jane bears a head injury that erases her memory of the recent events. Susie was still in her bedroom after an asthma attack, but her inhaler was too far gone to reach it. When Patrick sees Jane and his brother at the bottom of the stairs bleeding, he returns to Susie's room, only to find her dead. Being an opportunist, he picks up the hammer, wipes it down, and places it in Liam's hands, then heads back to his house, where the police meet him and tell him the tragic news. As Jane regains consciousness, she finds herself covered in Liam's blood, clutching the blade in shock and horror. Now we know that Liam is not real, he is a ghost that no one else can see. Previous scenes that showed Jennifer, Jane's mother, as a worker at a vintage shop, and Liam in the hospital didn't exist. It was all a bid to bring her home, where she could set her family free. When everything clears in front of her eyes, Alan approaches Jane, informing her that Alice is now safe, having been with Patrick before he arrived to retrieve her. Given what she just remembered, she runs to Patrick's house, as Alice might be in danger. Meanwhile, Patrick is trying to repeat history, as he lures Alice into playing with him. They told me not to play with you. Patrick asks who they are, and she says no one, and just as Patrick is about to molest Alice, Jane and Alan arrive. The sudden appearance of Jane and Alan forces Patrick to confront the truth he's been hiding. He immediately grabs a firearm and takes Alice to the barn. Don't shoot! Don't, don't shoot! Please, Patrick, don't hurt her. 
Luckily, Jane appears and strikes Patrick from behind with a shovel. Moments later, Patrick wakes up in Susie's room with his hands tied, and Jane leaves him there with the door locked, so the ghosts can finally have their revenge. Patrick begs forgiveness from the spirits of Susie, Liam, and Jennifer, but there is no apology for him. The movie concludes with Alan, Alice and Jane at the cemetery paying homage to her dead family, and bidding them farewell. It seems she has finally set them free. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Lavender 2016. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.